Hey everybody, it's Debbie O'Neill. Thank you so much for joining me for my 12 days of Cricut Christmas crafts. And today is day seven and we're gonna be making wood slice ornaments. And these are a little bit different than those, you know, regular ball ornaments that you're seeing everybody make right now. These are a little more unusual, so it gives you another option to make. And we're going to also be able to work with patterned adhesive vinyl, okay? Something we haven't done in the 12 days yet. And I wanted to help you understand how to use this uh, specialty material and what you need to do to be successful working with it. And also how to size it to be able to fit onto your ornament slices. Now, these are slices that you purchase on Amazon. I'm gonna give you guys a supply list and all that with some links. And these already have a little hole in them, into the top of them, and they've already been sanded. But we're gonna be painting with chalk paint. We're going to be adding the pattern vinyl. I'm going to give you a bunch of tips on how to size your image to be able to fit onto your wood slices. And then, of course, how to decorate them and kind of dress them up a little bit. And you will get the design space cut file and the supply list will be where you see the video posted on my YouTube channel in the description of that video. You will see the links for those two things so that you can also create these if you want to. Well, we're going to start by talking about the supplies that you're going to need for this particular project. Then we're going to be talking about um, the sizing and design space and how do I do all that. And then the next thing we're going to be doing, of course, is making the project. So hopefully you'll enjoy this. Let me know your thoughts and comments and let's get started. Okay, let's take a look at the supplies that we're going to need to make the wood slice ornament with the printed vinyl. Um, so I'm going to be using the Cricut uh, Removable Matte Premium Vinyl. Uh, this is the Rustic Lodge Lumberjack Sampler. Now you can use any pattern that you like. Uh, that's going to be up to you. Uh, we are going to be using a white background on our wood slices. So just think about that. You want the vinyl, the pattern vinyl to have some uh, quite a bit of color to it so it stands out. Okay, so that's the only thing there. I'm using the Rustic Lodge Lumberjack Sampler because it goes, I'm going to use this Buffalo uh, Red and Black Plaid because that goes with my holiday theme this year color scheme wise and um but you can use any all right so you're going to need that and of course you're going to need your wood slices now the wood slices i bought on uh, amazon and i will give you guys a link to those um they're fairly inexpensive they do have a pre-drilled hole in the top of them. So you want the ones that have the pre-drilled hole. Not all of them do. So if you're looking around out there and you think, oh, this is a better deal, look and make sure. And what you want to do is you want to get ones that say that they're sanded or they've been prepped in some way because that's going to make them nice and flat to be able to add the vinyl to it. And you also want the ones that have the drilled hole in them. OK, so I'll give you a link to the ones that I purchased. And there's a bunch of different vendors selling them. And they also have had these at the craft stores lately if you can find them in stock. OK, that's been the trick. Um, I know Michael's had them where you could do bulk, a bulk order of them um, and be able to have them shipped to store and pick them up. So look around. Uh, I'll give you guys the Amazon link, but you'll need some of these. And we're going to be making one ornament today. But, you know, think about what else you can do with these after you see the technique, okay? So you're going to need some of these, and you will need, this is a little wired, it looks, it's, it's to make reefs or little things with it, and it's a super fine, thin one, okay? You can find some of the other ones that have more leafy type leaves on them. Those will work, but this one that looks more like a pine branch kind of look is the one that I'm using, and I bought this at a Hobby Lobby, and it's $3.99. You get this giant roll, and I made all kinds of things with them, which I will be showing you in another um 12 days of Christmas project. Anyway, so you'll want a roll of this. And then I also picked up these little mini pine cones and berry picks. And they were $3.99. I got them at Hobby Lobby when I was there. And you can get these at the craft stores or online, but they're just little mini pine cones. And these just happen to have just a hint of like a gold color on the pine cone. And then these little red berries. So you want some of those. 
and you will need some twine or some hemp cord okay so whatever you have um, I'm using a red and white or a red hemp cord so either either one of these because that's what you're going to use uh, to hang your ornament with and you will need some bells so they sell them in packages of these bells. You definitely want red ones. So I have some that are the 12 millimeter red ones. This one was a, just a multi-pack I already had in my stash. You, The 12 millimeter ones are the ones that we're going to hang at the top of our ornament. And then the small ones that are the 9 millimeter are the littler ones that are going to go on the ornament. Um on the little reef part so two different sizes of the red bell, bells will be what I'm using if you can only find one size one size is fine too okay I just wanted you to know what I picked alright so and I had these in my stash um, because I'm always using bells during the holidays for whatever reason and then you will need some white chalk paint okay also I bought this at Hobby Lobby but they sell it at Michaels and Joann's and everything I'm using a, a folk art brand uh, but it doesn't matter as long as it's white chalk paint and the reason why we want to use chalk paint is because it gives it a nice matte finish and it dries much faster than an acrylic paint would I'm just using a little uh, little paper plate I buy them at the Dollar Tree uh, in stacks and then I just use them for my palette when I'm painting projects like this and then you need to have a flat brush okay so this is a flat edge brush here because that's going to help give us a nice clean edge when we go to paint onto our ornament all right so you need that i i will be using my craft mat my uh, multi-purpose craft mat and i'll link this up for you guys i use this when i'm doing painting or doing a lot of hot glue work because i can just peel it right off of this and it doesn't get stuck on my beautiful uh cricut self-healing mat all right so i'll have that also, a ruler would be handy so that you can, I'm going to show you guys how to measure your uh, wood slice so that then you know how big you could possibly make your image. You need some tools. Of course, we'll be using a Cricut uh, blight grip mat to be able to cut our vinyl. And then our scissors because we're going to be cutting twine. So you want your scissors. We're going to need a pair of wire cutters because we're going to be cutting this wired greenery okay so we'll need that and then we're going to be weeding some vinyl so you'll definitely will need your weeder and I'm going to be using my little uh, fine tip um, tweezers sorry guys the fine tip tweezers that uh, come in the weeding tool kit because these come in really handy for helping place things onto our reef when we start doing the glue work and also for weeding and we will need a hot glue gun so make sure you get your hot glue gun out so those are all the supplies that you're going to need to make these okay now before we can size our image and get it ready to be cut we need to look at our wood slices so every wood slice these are made from nature right so they're actual wood slices and each of them are going to have a different lighter coloring than the bark part of it okay because that's just how trees grow and they may not all be from exactly the same slice of log that they cut them from they just bag them up and you know you pick them up um, to use so you need to not worry about that it's not consistent in the shape of it but you do need to worry about getting the ruler out and we're gonna try to imitate about the shape of the this white part of your log slice okay and we're gonna look at from the top up here where the hole is drilled okay and I'm just gonna measure it flip my ruler down I'm just gonna measure it from where the top of that where the white part of this starts down to the bottom part okay so this one is roughly um, two and three quarters from the top of this to the top of to the bottom of the of the white part all right and then I'm going to measure it side to side and that is about two and a half inches so it's two and a half inches this way and two and seven two and three quarters this way okay so you're going to measure your wood slice piece so that you can get an idea of the circumference that we're going to deal with when we go to put uh, you know, put our design space file together all right now the other thing I want to talk about is that when you go to work with your patterned vinyl 
Pattern vinyl is a little bit different than regular vinyl because guess what? It is only printed. Only the top part is printed. All right, doesn't matter what brand you're using, it's only printed on the top of it. So let me show you, if you look at the back of your printed vinyl, you're going to see the back of it, the sticky side of it is white. Okay, so you will not be able to use pattern vinyl like on the inside of like a piece of glass, like, sh like if you're going to do a shadow box and you wanted to put the pattern on the inside, you're not able to do that with pattern vinyl because if you cut this in reverse to put it onto the inside of glass, you would just see the white part. You wouldn't see the pattern. So the pattern always has to be put on the top of the surface. Okay. And you just put it on just like you would any other one. I'm just using a, a light grip mat and you're just going to put it on just like you would any other vinyl. Use the regular vinyl setting and it'll cut beautifully for you. And this is a great uh, place for you to make some of these using scraps of vinyl, a uh, pattern vinyl you already have in your stash. If you do not have pattern vinyl, you can certainly just use regular vinyl on the front of these ornaments, okay? That's going to be up to you, but with the pattern vinyl, it just adds a lot more interest, and that's why we're using it today. And I get a lot of questions about pattern vinyl, and I wanted to make sure you guys knew how to use it. Okay, so once we have our supplies on hand, then we, of course, measured our uh, wood slice to understand on that wider part of the wood how big it was, all right? Because now we need to size our image that's going to go inside that image, and they're all, all your wood slices are going to be different, okay? So you may have some that are consistent enough that you can use the same sizing, but chances are you're going to have a little bit difference in them. If it's just slight, like a quarter of an inch or something, you can get away with just using the same size of initial. I'm talking about the the uh, monogram that we're going to put on these. But if you have um, a wood slice, let's say you are you just got a mixed bag of them, then you may have some that are much, much bigger or much, much smaller. So I'm going to show you how would I go about sizing it so that you can get it yours as correct as possible. All right. So I'm just going to go down here to shapes and I'm going to grab a circle because there is no oval on here. And most of your uh, rings on your tree uh, slices are going to be more of an oval shape. So we're going to click the circle and we're going to turn it into an oval. Now you saw me measure my wood slice a minute ago so that I got an idea of what that the lighter coloring inside the bark about how much that was, right? So I'm going to just unlock this and I'm going to make the height of mine was 2.75. Okay. And then the width of mine was two and a half. Okay. So now this is giving me a slight, it's not exactly perfect, but it's close enough for me to be able to use it. So I'm going to just make this a lighter cream color to represent the inside of the circle. And now I can play with putting figuring out what font do I want to use, all right? And then depending upon the look and feel that you want for your ornament slice, you can certainly pick different fonts. I'm going to pick a Cricut font, and so I'm just going to go into text, and I'm going to type in, I already made the D for myself, so I'm going to make an M for my husband, Michael, okay? And the font that I'm going to use is the Candice Regular, and it's a Cricut font. Now, if you don't like this font and you want to pick another one, there are a whole bunch of them for you to pick from. And, of course, you can use a font that you've already uploaded, um, you know, from Defawn or one of the other font sites, all right? So I've got this one, and I'm going to put it up here. Okay, so there is my M, but I really want to play with this shape a little bit. Um, because I'm putting it on a longer uh, image piece, I want to change the shape of the actual font. So I'm going to unclick, unlock it, and then I'm going to use a little grab bar. I'm going to pull it down a little bit, and then I'm going to lock it again. And see if I like that. As long as it doesn't sh change the overall look of my ornament, uh, my my uh, letter, then we'll be fine. And I think that fits really well here. What I'm looking for is this is going to be our lighter wood piece, right? This background. And we're going to be painting this white around the edge. And then on the outside of that, we're going to be putting that greenery on. Okay. We're going to be hot gluing. So we want to make sure that you have enough space all the way around your lettering 
that you have at least that much space between see where I have my cursor so you have at least that much space between your letter and where the outside of your circle is your oval rather um, because you want to be able to have enough clearance around that that when you put that green around you're going to be able to see it okay so that's how I kind of maneuvered my lettering now depending upon the font you're using it will make a difference on how big or how small you can make that font right so that's going to be up to you but I wanted to show you what I did um, it's okay to change the um, the overall dimensions of a font all right and that's certainly easy enough to do now you can pick other fonts you can do whatever but this will be I'm going to give you this design space file so that you have an oval to start with but you can then change the dimensions up here to whatever the size of oval it is that you need and then I'm going to go ahead and have the my letter M on there because that way you'll know that I use the Candace regular font and if you want to use the same font then you can just change your letter out and, and manipulate it a little bit so it fits because every single letter is going to be different because of the style of that letter all right so um, but that way or you can come up here to the fonts and you could just pick a completely different font whatever font you like okay so if I changed it to cartoon script or something you're going to see the size of it looks completely different but maybe you want your ornament to have more of this type of look to it okay which would be perfectly fine now I will say with the printed vinyl depending upon the uh, pattern on that vinyl you want something that has enough weight to it when you pick a font out and what I mean is like the thickness of the lettering because you want to be able to really see that pattern and if you pick something too small like this one in particular I would never pick this for a pattern vinyl it might be great just for a regular you know vinyl color but if you're working with a pattern you want to make sure that your font has enough weight or width to it that when you actually cut the cut the image out you see enough of the pattern you can tell that it was pattern vinyl that you used or really what's the point right um, anyway so this should give you a good idea and a little bit of you know thinking about which fonts you want to pick to do this with so let's get started and let's make our ornaments okay so the first thing we're going to need to do to, is to prep our wood slice by doing our white chalk paint on it but what we want to do is you want to wipe this off really well because it has been sawn um, and so what needs to be done is it will have like sawdust on it okay so we want to make sure that we wipe these clean so that our paint has the best chance of sticking well and then you'll have your little um, you know palette your paper plate or whatever it is that you're using the white chalk paint okay whatever brand you got but you're going to want to you're going to want to mix this up okay because the chalk paint separates in the container so make sure that you mix it up the, it'll usually say on the back shake paint shake paint well clean object prior to painting we've done that and um, you can clean this up with um, soap and water so we'll be able to clean our brush and use it again for another project so I've got mine and I'm just going to put a generous amount on my plate okay and then you want to take your flat edge paintbrush okay and put a generous amount on it and then I like to kind of wipe it off on the side here like that so that I only have a tiny amount on my brush okay and then I'm going to start up in one area and I'm just going to drag this around and I tend to just kind of turn it the ornament as I'm doing it and that gives me a clean edge okay and I and I definitely are, am going just around I'll show you see how I'm painting it on and it just kind of overlapped the the cutout that is perfectly acceptable so I'm just going to lay it on here and I'll just keep turning it it doesn't have to be perfect the beauty of these ornaments is that they look more rustic and they're more a little more unusual than all the other glass or ball ornaments that everybody's making so they're a little bit more special 
And once you've done two or three of these, they do become addictive and they get faster and faster for you to make them because you get more confident with your paint. And like I said, it doesn't need to be a perfect edge. You want it to be somewhat of a clean edge, but not. it doesn't have to be an absolute perfect oval, which I will show you mine when I finish. So I go all the way around first. I'm not putting a big glob on. It's pretty thin. I'm just going to match up those edges and then I want to paint the center. Okay, so I've got it all the way around the edges and now I'm just going to paint the center. Okay. And you want to put it on thin because you don't you want it to dry pretty quickly so you can get on to the next part with your ornament. So I like to go ahead and get all my painting done. And I'll do all the ornaments that I think I want to make. I'll go ahead and paint all of those. Okay, so I've got mine painted. All right, and we're going to set that off to the side and let it dry. Okay, and like I said, if I had a bunch of these I was going to do, I would go ahead and do all the painting at one time. So I'm going to set this off to the side and let that dry. While, while that's drying, then you can go back and weed your uh, vinyl. So here is my M that's cut out on the vinyl that I picked, which was the Buffalo Plaid. And you're going to weed this just like you would any other vinyl. Okay, that's the other question I get. Do I have to do something special with the pattern vinyl? Nope. You just weed it like you would any other vinyl. Now, use a piece of transfer tape, but you want to make sure that you're using regular transfer tape and not the strong grip transfer tape because, of course, that will just tear up your image. It won't ever come off of there if you use the strong grip because strong grip is only for um, using with your uh, glitter, glitter vinyl. Okay, so I've cut a piece of transfer tape. Okay, and then I'm going to lay this on just like I would any other, and I can still use my scraper on it, and press it down, and then this will be ready for me to adhere, so I would just do it just like I would my regular vinyl and peel this off. But you're going to notice the back of the vinyl is white, right? Because it's printed on, the pattern's printed on. So we're going to set this off to the side. We're not going to need that just yet. The next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and start prepping my other pieces, my pine cone and my reef. So this is still drying. It's still a little tacky to touch. It's pretty, it's getting dry, but it'll, it'll take another second or two for it to dry. If you're in a big hurry, you can take out your heat gun and apply some heat to it to dry it a little faster. But... I don't feel like I need to do that, so it'll dry here in just a minute or two. All right, so we're going to take a length of, of our frill here, <laughs> our greenery, and I am going to try to shape it close to the circumference of my slice, okay? So you want to just cut off some here, and that's when you need to have your wire cutters because there is a wire that runs in here. Do not use your scissors to cut this. You will ruin your scissors. You want to have a wire cutter. And then I'm going to take the two ends. I'm going to fold them over and all I'm doing is I'm twisting it. Okay. I'm twisting the wire so that it looks like it's one complete piece now. Okay, then I'm going to be able to take that and I'm going to be able to shape it into the size that I'm going to need to put on my slice. It's going to fit on my ornament like this. Okay, see how it's within. So I still see the, the bark of my wood slice, but it now will cover with uh, around that white part. Okay, doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. It's actually like a little bit better if it's not. So there we go. So we needed that. And then we need to get out our little picks. And we're still just waiting for this to dry enough that we'll be able to apply our vinyl here in a minute. 
but we were prepping. Okay, so here are those mini pine cone and berry picks that I picked up. And uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to cut a few pieces off of this. Now, you could use other little things that you find. I just find something in the floral department that works for you. Um, and then, because we're only going to use one little piece of this. So it comes in like a big twisted knot of this. But we only want to use like one of the little pine cones. So I pulled some of the pine cones off. And I could I could make a little cluster of pine cones on here if I wanted, but I want to put one pine cone. So I'm just going to take my wire cutters because these are all wired together. And I'm just going to cut a little pine cone. Okay, and I'll probably cut it off if it looks like too much of the wire sticking out. So I want one little pine cone and I want one little red berry. And then we also need to get out our bells. Okay, so we're going to get our bells out, and at this point is when you want to go ahead and turn your uh, hot glue gun on. If you want your hot glue gun, I'm going to be using my tweezers to help me place things so I don't burn my fingers with my glue. And as you can see, I'm using my craft mat, my uh, all-purpose craft mat here, so I don't get glue all over my pretty uh, Cricut self-healing mat. So we've got these pieces, and we need to get our bells out, and we need to have our whether you're using twine or you're using a hemp cord okay a hemp cord is kind of like twine it's a little bit sturdier I guess you would call it so it just depends upon what you have if you already have some in your stash go with what you have I'm gonna use some of the twine because I liked that look better and we need to get our bells out okay so for my particular ornament that I made I put the larger 12 millimeter bell at the top and then I put a smaller one here at the bottom where we added the little decorative touch here with the pine cone in the in the red pick okay I just had these in my stash they do come in single colors if you look in the craft stores you'll be able to find them but I'm using a 12 millimeter large one for the top and then the little one is the nine millimeter because you'll see on the packaging it tells you the sizing of them okay so that's what I'm talking about millimeters that's what I'm talking about okay so our ornament is completely dry now so we are ready to add our piece of vinyl I'm gonna go ahead and scrape that again to make sure it's on there well I'm gonna flip this over take that off and then I'm gonna place it onto my ornament now make sure you have your the your ornaments gonna hang with that hole okay so you want to make sure that you're lining your letter up so it's going to be in the right orientation where your hole is where we're gonna hang the ornament from okay now I'm just using my finger to rub this on you can use your scraper tool if you want, but I don't want to scratch anything, so I like to just use my finger to get it on there. And then I just need to use my I use my tweezers to lift up the transfer tape to get it off of here. Okay, and then I'm just going to peel that back. So I've got the lettering is on, and look how fun that is with the pattern vinyl okay so we've got that part done and now we get to put it all together so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hot glue my my little shape my little reef shape that I created around the edges like this okay so I'm gonna add hot glue to my wreath and you'll want to work fairly quickly with this so I'm just gonna add hot glue around the white edge okay now do not put glue over your hole or you won't be able to get your um, get your thread in there your twine or whatever you're using okay and then I just want to press this down and let that sit for a minute before I do anything else to it because once I get it like that, then I can kind of go back and fluff it up once it looks like my glue's kind of set up. And then it looks much more dimensional. 
super cute. All right, now we get to have fun and we just get to glue stuff on. So I'm going to put a dollop of glue right here, kind of on that lower right hand side. And I'm going to stick the little berry picks going to go in there. And then I'm going to add my little pine cones going to go there. And I'll use my little tweezers if I need to, to just kind of set those on and hold them down to make sure that the glue's really grabbing it. Okay, and then I'm going to add another little dollop of glue kind of underneath that, a little bit bigger of a dollop. You can see how big I have that glue glued on. And then I'm going to put that smaller of the bell into that glue spot right there underneath where the berry is. Okay, so we've got this part on right here. And then we want to finish the top. So you need to get your twine out. Now I cut about a 12 inch piece of twine. Okay, and then I have my hole at the top of my ornament that I can push the little piece of twine in. And as I'm pushing it through, I'm kind of twisting it and then I'll be able to grab it. And that's where your tweezers come in handy as well. <laughs> be able to pull those out. Okay, so I'm gonna even this up, okay? And then I want to tie a knot. Okay, so I'm going to make a loop. I'm just going to make one loop. Okay, and that's going to help keep our ornament hanging straight when we go to put it on. All right, so we've got one loop. I've tied it one loop, and this is what's going to keep our ornament straight. And then I'm going to take just one of the sides of the twine, and I'm going to put the larger of the bells on there on the top. Okay, so then that bell's going to sit there, and then I'm going to make one more loop. There we go. Okay, so I made the loop and I tied it tight. Okay, and then all I have to do is tie this. Okay, I'll make a pretty good knot there. I may tie it once or twice, depending upon how tight I was able to get the knot, but you want it tight because then this becomes your hanger to put it onto your tree branch. All right, and then I'll just trim up the edges. Okay, and now you have your perfect, cute little pattern vinyl ornament on the wood slice. Think about all the different things you could do with this. You could, you know, put initials on it. You could put an image. It could just be images using the pattern vinyl of whatever the favorite image is of that person. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this.